Yeah, we're introducing today a very special guest, <laughs> Dennis Spitzer from uh, from Australia, but originally from from Hungary. Yeah. Dennis, oh, you have the distinction of um, unfortunately there are not too many Kastner train survivors. I think you were two years old when you were on the Kastner train. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, so um, if you could share with our listeners. You know, that's part of our history, which is very important. Yeah. And um, it's amazing that, uh, please God, you should be well and um, I may be stream, but uh, it's just, it would be fascinating for, for me personally and for our listeners just to hear a little bit of a story. How did you manage to get, how did your parents manage to get you onto the Kastner train and, and you survived the war? You were born in Hungary? Yes. In Budapest? <coughs> I was born in Hungary, I was born in Budapest, and, uh, and basically what happened was that uh, I think I must have been about maybe two and a half, three years old when uh, I was in, uh, I, I was in Hungary, well it wasn't actually Hungary, it was, uh, you know, I think I don't think I was more than about two and a half years old. Okay. When uh, when the war broke out. When the war broke out, or when when they 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 pushed us. When I say us, I mean members of our family, including me, and uh, we Baruch uh, Hashem, we were lucky enough to get out. Of uh, Germany, uh, it was Germany or Hungary? It, it was Germany. It was ma mainly Germany. I mean, the Hungarians. You know, we there, there was no great love between uh, us and the Hungarians. But you were living in Budapest at the time. I was living in Budapest at the time, and uh, what happened was that. Uh, the people, I mean, your family were you were you were only two years old, but your family was living in Budapest. Part of my family were living in Budapest. There were, there were you know, quite, uh, quite a number of people, you know, who, uh, um, because, the, uh, you know, when, when you, when you sort of look in, you know, when, when you look at what happened at the time, because I was, I must have been only about two and a half, three years old. Now, let me just ask. How many, first of all, to our listeners out there, Kastner was a very controversial figure because he was part of the Jewish, uh, the Jewish committee there in Budapest and yeah. he managed to get the secret train mm -hmm. where select people actually got um, room on that train that, to get out of Budapest and to leave, uh, to leave Hungary and to leave the war and to go to safety. So there weren't that many places on the train uh, and it's amazing that he, that you actually were most probably one of the youngest that were on the train. Did your whole family go on the train or part of your family? Look, as far as I know, and I mean, I'm, I'm sort of going back, you know, quite a few yeah. years. Um, uh, I must have been about two and a half, three years old when we ended up in Bergen-Belsen. We actually ended up in Bergen-Belsen. Were you together with your family? I was your mother and no, father? No, my father, he was in a different place. My mother was in a different place. Actually, my mother, as far as I know, she was in uh, Hungary. You know, she wasn't. But I was in this special place together with other so-called members of our family. In other words, some, my, my father was... Uh, he, he was in a workers' camp. You know, he, Did your parents survive the war? My parents survived the war. And you were reunited? And we were reunited. Were you all on the train together? Well, it, it wasn't so simple, unfortunately. Basically what happened was that in the beginning, you know, there was a train, there wasn't a train, and me or the Amakara. The net result was that uh, at the age of, I don't know, I don't think I was much more than about maybe three years old, maybe four years old, me or the Yama, the next result was that, uh, you know, the Germans, they're the ones who 
put us, uh, who, who wanted to kill us. You know what I mean? And as a result of that, uh, Baruch Hashem, things happened, and uh, the uh, the Germans, in in the long end, did not kill us because everything uh, everything just happened. You know. And let me ask. After the war, um, you you actually did go into the train, and you were one of the survivors from the train. You landed up in Australia. No, we landed. We ended up. In uh, in Switzerland, no, I know. But on on route to from Switzerland, do you spend many years in Switzerland? We didn't spend a lot of time in Switzerland. No, I mean the, um, but we after after a long uh, after a long stay after the war after the war after the war, you know, we um, we spend time out of uh, obviously out of Hungary. Out of uh, Germany, and um, eventually we uh, we ended up with uh, with with our mishpacha, you know, who came to live in um, after the war. We in 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 Australia. It wasn't in Australia. It was in uh, you know, trying to remember. It was in Switzerland. It was in Switzerland. And how long? Do you remember how long you stayed in Switzerland? That's a good question because you know it was such a long time ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you must have stayed in Switzerland for a little time. Things were, <clears throat> and eventually, um, we ended up, you know, living in Australia. And your parents were with you in Australia? And my parents were with me in Australia. Yeah. That's amazing, you know. Yeah. And um, my father grew Hashem and he came back and, you know, he had a terrible, you know, he was, uh, he was a broken man. You know, he was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and uh, yet, it just so happened that uh, um, my father, he decided that you know, this is not the right country to live in, and this and that, and so on. So we, so he decided that all of us will end up in Australia. And that's what happened. It took time. It didn't happen, you know, from one moment to the other. Because uh, I was actually in Bergen-Belsen, you know, from the age of maybe two and a half, three and a half, maybe four, or something. And until things turned around, you know, it took a long time um, until we ended up in uh, Switzerland. Excuse me, in Switzerland. Can I ask, when your father joined your family in Australia, um, this is a bit of a personal question. Yeah. Was he still? Did he re retain his his emuna, his faith? Oh, sure, sure. Was he religious? Of course. Yeah, he was. Of course, he was. All of us were religious. I mean, it's amazing because to have gone through the trauma yeah, and the yeah, tragedy yeah. and the, oh. the horrendous shire, oh. the horrendous Terrible. time in, in Europe, and then oh. still to be very strong in one's faith, yeah. it, it's, oh. it's a very he, special thing. He was such a mensch, you know, such a, a wonderful human being, really. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Baruch Hashem. In spite of everything that he had to go through, you know all this rubbish, you know which the, you know who, and the Germans were the ones that you know um, tried to stop it. But in the end, Baruch Hashem, you know, Hakol was everything was minashamai. And your mother also, she she retained her faith. My mother, she retained her faith also. I mean, the good part. I mean, there were good parts and bad parts. The uh, the bad parts were that um, my father he was he was in a workers camp, you know also mm -hmm. under under Germany and and you know it, you know it was just terrible just to think about how it happened what happened and and so on and so forth and uh, my mother she was. <clears throat> 
she was actually in, uh, you know, where we were was uh, um, in Germany. Mm -hmm. They, you know, my uh, one my, of the my mother. Yeah, yeah. It was well, it was a camp and this and uh, yeah. It was Balagan. You know, Can I ask, Dennis, did your parents ever tell you how they managed to get onto that Kastner train and how how that actually how you managed to survive? How you were the one of the lucky ones that actually got passage on the train? You know, I mean, it's going back such a long time. Did they ever discuss the topic with you? Yeah, you they recall? discussed it with us, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, there were very difficult times, and uh, you know, when when you're two and a half or three years old, you know, you don't know. Do you have any memories? I mean, from such a young age of yeah, of that we period? have we have memories because you know, everything came back. You know, once we. Uh, once we actually uh, left uh, Hungary and after that left uh, other countries and so on and so forth, you know, we were very happy to be in, in Australia. Do you ever have like dreams or do you ever have visions of the train that you were on? Yeah, yeah, we had You visions. can envision it? Yeah, we had, we had visions and we had this and that and everything else. But the important thing was that the family got together and Baruch Hashem, we all made it. You know, so, none of us, you know, really, I mean, you know, my father, unfortunately, I think he must have been, uh, you know, trying to think. He must have been in his 60s when he passed away. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was 65. Yeah. And that was also in Australia. You know, and, uh, you know, I mean, it, it took a long time to, but Australia, you know, was a, a wonderful place. So what I found remarkable, I know two personal friends of mine, where both their, their parents actually had lost their original families yeah. and remarried and started new families. And what I found absolutely just incredible, mind-boggling, that even more than that, no words can describe, is that they kept their strong faith in Judaism and in Hashem, even having lost the entire families, and they decided that they were going to create new families, and they got remarried, and they had um, they had children, and the new worlds, you know, they, sure. they actually, in a way, they showed that they were not defeated, and they continued the generations, and they continued the, um, they continued the, Judaism and they continued sure. I'm Israel sure. oh. and they kept what, what I found astonishing and actually there's just no way to describe how somebody to have gone through such a tremendous trauma I mean we can't yeah. even imagine what they went through to have yeah. lost your entire family sure. and then still remain religious and remain yeah. your strong emunah your faith in, in, in God and Hashem is remarkable beyond belief sure and you, you're telling us that your your parents were still very religious oh, and very very yeah. committed to sure. to Hashem and to Mitzvah. Sure. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, they saw what was happening, and uh, you know, the war was coming to an end, and uh, Baruch Hashem, they managed to do the things that they wanted to do, and in the process, you know, they they uh, ended up, you know, coming to Australia. And your decision to come to Israel? My you, decision was to come to Israel at a later. At, you were at a, you were grown up. You were brought up in a Zionistic family. Yeah, yeah. My my decision was, you know, I mean, you know, a big deal. I was twelve years old or thirteen years old, and I I came to live in Australia. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know anything about the language. Um, I knew a lot about many other languages, and you know, and I had to start from scratch. But, uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, I mean... Uh, and can I ask you, I mean, Australia was good to many oh, Jewish survivors, wonderful. many survivors, uh, Holocaust survivors. Wonderful. It was and uh, we, they, we are indebted to Australia because they really took sure. a lot of uh, oh. refugees, a lot of sure. broken homes and broken families. Baruch and Hashem, it, it was People re-established their lives there. Yeah. Oh. 
you happy you made Aliyah? Are you happy you oh, came to live in Israel? For sure, for sure, yeah. No, we, we always, I mean, eventually, we, we realized that, you know, okay, Australia was nice, everything was fine, and so on and so forth. This but is where we were. Yeah, but, you know, we wanted to come to Eretz Israel. And, and, and eventually that's what happened. We came to Eretz Israel and, and we came with, uh, um, you know, by that time, you know, we had children and this and that and so on. And, and uh, Australia was uh, a wonderful country for us. Dennis, I want to really thank you and uh, may Hashem just grant all his blessings and you may, may, may oh, live a uh, very stream and you must just be healthy and, and have nachas oh, and listen. all of Hashem's blessings. Listen, we are so happy that we're here. We Absolutely. are so happy Absolutely. to be here and, uh, and thank God, you know, with all, with all the bloody problems that we had to go through and, and, and so on, you know, in spite of everything, everything turned out to be great you know no no bullshitting you know it was you know okay. very very Wonderful. difficult very difficult times but on the other hand Baruch Hashem yeah. Hakol was Mina Shamai you know absolutely you know in those days you know when 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 you didn't have this and you didn't have that and you didn't have the other thing and and, and you had these bloody Germans you know um, on our backs, yeah. and and uh, you know, I mean, you know, we were in, uh, in in a terrible situation. Well, thank God you got into that train. Thank yeah. God you were one of those Kastner, although uh, very controversial because people felt that Kastner he didn't tell, he didn't warn, he didn't warn the community. And if he would have warned the community, things might have been very different. Sure. So he's an exceptionally controversial figure in Jewish history. Uh, some see him as a hero, some see him as a massive villain. Um, you know, the verdict is still out there. You know, it's, it is difficult, but you are testament to one of those that, through his acts, whatever it was, you did survive, thank God, and it was Hashem. Shemai. Yeah. And we must just be grateful that, thank God, you, you actually survived the war and uh, and you continued on Israel. So, yeah, yeah. Dennis, no, it's... We, a, it's no. a great honor and a privilege to have you. No, it's and we just we just wish you all the muzzle and the brocha and all of the blessings. Thanks. Thank you. Nice.